this thing is fly like a G55, not a G6. Let's get started. This is a 2003 Mercedes-Benz G55 AMG, and things are about to get really weird. Once you see some of the issues this vehicle had, and we've actually already solved them, but I want to show you how I solved them, it is really strange. Very, very strange. It came in with a vibration in the front end, like the steering wheel was shaking. They tried tires, they had the wheels inspected, they tried all kinds of different things that the customer did. Which is also, by the way, owned by the owner of Best Value Auto Sales in Hutchison, Kansas. This is not going on the lot, though. This one is going to be his personal ride, he got it for cheap. He wants the things fixed and figured out, like, what is going on with this vehicle? I want to get it fixed and I want to cruise in it. Well, he does. So let's take a look around it. We're not going to look too much into it today. We have a lot of things apart, but it's going to be a good video showing you guys how crazy things can be. Once you find out you've tried this, you try that, everything that could be logically wrong with the vehicle, and it ends up being none of that. So let's take a look around. So here's the front of this beautiful G-Wagon. Really, as we go along and look around, you're going to see it's actually in pretty good shape. But it'd be interesting to know the story behind the previous owners once you see what I find. As you can see, the front wheels are off. We had to do some serious repairing that we're going to show you here in a minute. So as you can see down this side, it's also in very good shape. It has the side exit exhaust, which are really cool. We come around to the back, you can see it has LED tail lights. Really, a lot of the lights and things on this thing are aftermarket. It has some decent wheels on it. The body is really in pretty good shape. It has 125,000 miles. But let's start diving into the crazy things that are wrong with this vehicle. So we'll turn on the turn signals here. And we can see that they work perfectly fine on the mirror and also up front, but not in the rear. Let's take a look. So you can see it's working up front, but here in the back, nothing. So. We've already dived in and looked at this. I'm going to go ahead and remove this and show you guys some of the weird things we found. And then ultimately, what was the solution to get this to work again? So common sense would say you take this off and see if there's any broken wires or something's going on with this actual tail lamp unit. You can definitely see it's aftermarket. One thing I found really strange is there's a switch where I can turn off the brake lights. So whoever was using this vehicle may have been doing illegal activities. They can turn off all lights, even the brake lights, and have run completely stealth in the dark. So it's kind of like, well, what were they, what were they doing with this thing? What is the story to this vehicle? But that has nothing to do with the turn signal. I actually disconnected this yellow wire, which is black and white on the vehicle's end. There is no power, nothing coming through this wire. Also, there's no power to these side marker lamps. So I had to dig a little deeper. This would kind of throw people for a loop. It's like, okay, well, it's just that. Turn it on. But it, that's just the brake lamps. This is, it's getting even weirder, guys. And once we get into the front wheels, it's going to get really weird. So, so let me tell you guys what I found that actually fixed this thing. What's really strange on these vehicles is that the turn signals are ran off of two separate modules. It's called a SAM, not Uncle Sam. It's signal acquisition module on these. It has a rear SAM and a front SAM. The rear lights, the rear tail lights, everything back here is ran off of the rear SAM. The front headlamps, the front turn signals, everything up there is run off the front SAM. And somehow it all syncs and works together, but there's some issues in the rear SAM that are causing no turn signal there, also no side marker lamps. And it was going to be very, very expensive to get that fixed. A new module programmed at the dealer, because we don't have security programming here. We can't do VIN programming, things of that nature. So. 
I kind of looked at the wiring diagram and I proposed an idea. I said, there is another way around this if you want to save a little money and not have to worry about programming. And it'll make it work perfectly the way it really should have worked like any other car. So let's hop into the interior and show you what I did. Underneath the glove box, here is our front SAM. It has fuses, like a fuse box and relays, and inside of it, it controls all the different front lighting and all the different things like that. It's its own little module for all those items. But it does not control the rear lights. A separate module does that. Which is this guy here, and I'm wiggling. That is the rear SAM. And it controls the rear tail lights, rear turn signals, all those different things going on in the rear. It's like having two brains, one for the bottom half of your body and another brain that runs the top half of your body. And somehow it all syncs and it works. It's kind of overly complicated if you ask me. What? A German car this complicated? Yep. So the owner of the car was like, I'm interested in your idea. Is there any way we can make this work without spending thousands of dollars and getting all this stuff replaced and reprogrammed and I was like, well, there is a way. We're adding only one more lamp to the circuit. It's not going to hurt it. It is to have a wire ran from the front SAM, which is currently working for the front two turn signals, and connect that wire over to the wire that goes from the rear SAM to those rear lights. And you can see I already have a yellow wire there. So I'm going to show you guys. I'll turn on the key here. I'll have Mrs. Wizard do the left turn signal. I already have a pin poked into the wire that specifically does the turn signals. And you can see in the front, it works great. It is a perfectly working turn signal in the front. Now let's go to the rear SAM. So here's the rear turn signal for the driver's side coming out of the rear SAM. We have nothing. It's dead. So I had the idea, why don't I connect this wire that's not working. I'll actually cut it and it won't even be connected to the SAM anymore, the rear SAM. And join it together with the working wires out of the front SAM. Let's go ahead and do that now. Now we still have a working wire here. Let's see if it works back here now. Oh, look at that. Let's go to our rear left tail lamp and see, is it currently working now? Ta-da! This type of work that I can do here is exactly how I got the name from Hoovy on Hoovy's Garage, a wizard. You take this to a dealer, they're going to say, you need a new module, blah, 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 and say, was there any way else to make this work? Nope. You're just going to pay to three grand or get the hell out. I didn't do that with Tyler even from the get-go. He was trying to sell cars for a living. He didn't want to spend thousands on every single car that he was going to sell. It works perfect. It's not going to hurt the front, Sam, to add an LED that has very little load to the circuit. It very likely could work that way for years. It's not going to hurt anything. So now the front SAM just had one extra circuit added to its turn signal circuit. The rear SAM left turn signal will just be cut. It's not even going to be used anymore. Now that I've proven that this will work, I will professionally install a wire going around through the dash. I will make it look professional. There's no danger for fire. There's no danger for damaging the modules. It's not going to hurt anything. And I will solder the wires together, put it all together, and it'll look stock. You won't even be able to tell. And now all the lights will work properly. The same idea is also going to be used for the side marker lamps that aren't working. I can just jump the wires from the front SAM and boom, fixed. So this vehicle had two problems, the vibrating in the steering wheel and this issue. So this issue is solved. Now we're really going to get really weird. Let's move up to the front wheels. Before I did this, I ran this through my buddy Cameron at DC Motor Works in Atlanta, Georgia, who is Ed Bolians from VinWiki, is his mechanic. He's a master tech Mercedes-Benz. The guy knows his stuff about Mercedes like a walking library. 
I asked him, I said, is this even feasible? Is this something that can be done? And he said, if cost is the issue, he said, absolutely, only an idiot would not do this repair. So to say, well, you're an idiot, you shouldn't do it that way. Actually, a master tech gave me the go ahead and said, that's genius, you should do that, car wizard. It's got 125,000 miles on it. We've seen probably the life that this thing has had in the past is not so great. We're not trying to make it a museum piece here. We're trying to keep the bill light and make it functional again. So I mentioned the vibration in this vehicle. It had at 50 or 60 miles an hour, it would oscillate really bad, shake the wheel, it would come and go. I'm gonna list three things and play the game with you guys and see if in the comments you can guess which one it was. Is it A, a loose tie rod end? Is it B, a loose track rod? Or is it C, a wheel issue? I'll give you guys a few minutes and you can choose. The answer is C, kind of. It's not really the wheel itself, but it was an issue with the wheel. If you'll watch this quick little video clip I did, this is in the shop here in the previous week. The quality's maybe not that great, but it gives you guys the test that we did to figure this out. Here's the quick little video clip. Now, as you can see, as the wheels are turning, I had Magic Mike in the driver's seat running up to 50, 60 miles an hour on the lift, and the wheel was physically out of round. I held my marker in place, and you could hear it going, no, 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 no. Obviously, that's going to create the vibration. Magic Mike did check it over. He checked all the common sense things that should be wrong with this vehicle, and it was none of those. And he said, Car Wizard, I, is there any other ideas you might have? And I said, I did the little test you just saw there, because I've seen that many times in the past, many years ago, of all the years I've been working on cars, and it proved to be what was wrong. Now, what was causing it to be out of round? It wasn't the tire, it wasn't the wheels, the tires are brand new. This is really weird, guys. You can see that on the Mercedes-Benz, on the hub, on the G-Wagons, it has three little fingers that stick out. They're supposed to center the wheel, it's called a centric ring, before you put the lug nuts on. Someone took a cutting wheel and physically hacked them off so these wheels would fit. Isn't that crazy, guy? Who does that? Let me ask again, who does that? So I was able to use some of the years of experience I had in a machine shop. I worked in an aircraft machine shop for several years. I did CNC programming, setting up machines, running machines. And it came to be a very good skill set to have because I was able to fix this without spending tons of money. Again, more wizard tricks. I was able to use a lathe I have in the back of the shop. It's a very large metal lathe to reface the face of the hub. I got a bearing race, cut it down to size, welded it on the inside to my new faced area and then turned that down in unison with the lathe and gave it a concentric ring again. Using a lathe and a welder, I was able to do this. So as you can see, the three finger area is gone now. I faced it down on the lathe like you just saw in the clips and made it perfectly flat. And where it was flat, I welded. This is actually a bearing race. It was just a little too big, a little bit too big around. I welded in place, made sure it was perfectly straight. Then I placed, this, this hub was taken off. I placed the hub again in the lathe and turned the diameter to match exactly with the remainder of what was left on it, the little nub. So now we tested it out and the wheel fits snugly on there and all the lug nuts line up perfect. Why would someone even do that? I mean, after they put the wheels on and the thing's shaking like crazy and somebody said, I'm good bro, I, that's good enough for me. This is a G-Wagon, it's nice. I, I don't get it. But anyways, more wizarding tricks that I did and I fixed it. So why did they cut those off originally? Let's take a look at the wheel. You can see this bore here. That's where the centric ring is supposed to fit inside and center the wheel before you put the lug nuts on. It was probably a little tight or it wouldn't fit for some reason. Instead of maybe resurfacing in here or maybe turning down the surface on the hub itself, they just cut the whole ring off. These wheels are meant to fit various different vehicles and for whatever reason it didn't fit the concentric ring on this perfectly. 
and the answer was to cut the fingers off, which was dumb. But now we have that new piece welded on. These fit snugly, they fit perfect. And when you put in the lug nuts, they all line up. Everything is just like it should be. The cost to replace these hubs with labor and doing everything, taking it all apart and retorquing the bearings, which are 200 Newton meters on these is very important. It sounds like a lot, but it is the specified amount in the Mercedes shop manual. Cameron at DC Motorworks actually texted me as I was doing this. He goes, oh, by the way, Car Wizard, this isn't like your standard bearings on your 75 Lincoln. These bearings are torqued heavy, 200 Newton meters. Make sure to do that. And I did check the service manual and he was right. I was like, wow, that's a lot. But that's what it calls for. Anyways, to do all that, replace the hub, the cost of the part could easily be $400 per side almost a grand. I was able to fix these for probably a hundred dollars, hundred and fifty dollars per side. It saves a lot of money. Now the concentric ring is not structural. It does not hold the wheel on. Although the welds that I did will probably be able to, you could pick the car up with them almost, they're very strong. All it needs to do is center the wheel. Some aftermarket wheels you buy will actually come with plastic hub-centric rings to fit various different makes and models. So if plastic is okay, I think that my welded ring will be more than adequate. For some reason, the backs fit on perfectly. There was just some, I don't understand the issue. I kind of, that's just kind of a summation of what I think it is. But for whatever reason, they cut those off. But now the ring is back in place, the wheel can go on, way less money. So for probably a grand, everything will be solved on this, where if you took it to a dealer or an independent shop who is just out to get money, top dollar every time, this could easily be three grand or more. It's very easy for someone to pull up in one of these and an owner of an unscrupulous shop would say, I see a G-Wagon, I see dollar signs, add 30% to the bill right now. We haven't even worked on it yet, but add 30%. That happens a lot, guys, believe it or not. I'm more of the mind that a guy pulls up in a McLaren P1 or a Ferrari 360 or any other car. I see a customer, if I treat them right and charge them fairly, they have money that any time they need work, they won't look anywhere else. They will always call Omega Auto Clinic over and over and over again. And the thing is, when you get good with the customers, someday something bad is going to happen. They're going to have a failure with one of their cars that's a factory defect or something. It's going to really wreck their car. It is going to be expensive. And they're going to say, don't even call me with the price, Car Wizard. Just fix my car because I trust you. So that's how you do business in the automotive world if you want to keep the top customers coming all the time. We don't get a lot of G-Wagons in the shop. I'm really happy to work on it is really beautiful vehicle. I'm glad we can solve these issues without burning the guy's pocketbook up. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to check this thing out, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because next week is full of cars coming in, which means more videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.